A lot of us don't really want to think about where we'd want our final resting place to be, and you might be surprised at the options available to you after you die. Well, Denver 7's Russell Haythorn tonight going 360, exploring some new trends, including green burials and parties in lieu of funerals. Saying goodbye is often and appropriately a somber event, but this is no longer your grandmother's funeral service. Seeking alternatives that looked more like the parties that they wanted to have. From human composting. Composting actually breaks bones down quite well. Sounds sort of like a zombie apocalypse a little bit. To water cremation. It uses 90% less energy than a fire cremation would. Dying today looks different than it did just a few years ago. The patron family today is looking at less carbon footprint. So let's go 360, starting with Emily Nelson and Cherie Brownie at Beatrice Cremation, an eco-friendlier way to reach your final resting place. The decedent will go right in here. This is essentially the opposite of traditional cremation by fire. So this is our water cremation system or alkaline hydrolysis. Mostly it's the water that's doing the work, just like natural decomposition. It's gonna take about 18 hours from start to finish. In the end, the liquid is transferred to this flower farm as organic fertilizer. The liquid byproduct that's left at the end of the process is very nutrient rich. Um, so we call that liquid tree tea. There's limitless fulfillment that comes from this type of work for me. The residual dirt left over is given to the families. Because you're still getting an urn back with the cremation remains inside, you can still you know, use that cemetery plot that you might have purchased years ago. Or skip that altogether. We offer human composting to the public, also called natural organic reduction. Katrina Spade is the founder of Recompose. Recompose is a new option for ecological death care. Not that complicated, actually. If you think about what's happening all over the world right now, in forests, for example, as uh, dead organic material leaves and sticks is decomposing and creating soil, that's composting. Recompose has created this honeycomb of futuristic eye-catching vessels. Bodies go in and one month later, dirt comes out. Each person's body gets to stay in that vessel for about a month. And we lay the body on top of a mixture of wood chips, alfalfa, and straw. Microbes break everything down, including the plant material. And at the end, you have this beautiful, nutrient-rich soil. Your family can decide to take that soil home and grow a tree or put it on your garden. And Colorado is just the third state to legalize it. There are also changing trends in funeral services and celebrations of life. We get energized by being able to offer different experiences. At Olinger Crown Hill Funeral Home and Mortuary, three years ago, they permanently removed the pews from the old chapel putting in tables and chairs. We love to see innovation. We love to see new things, try new things. Shannon Martin is the funeral home manager at Crown Hill and sees this as a modern contemporary take on the old school funeral. And part of it is maybe the Colorado factor that we're just a little more casual yeah. here than maybe the East Coast. Exactly. Marketing director Matt Whaley says it's a hit. The table and chairs represents community where people can sit around the table and share stories. Then there's the question, are cemeteries like Fort Logan running out of space? The short answer is no, because this national treasure has purchased this open space right next door, allowing it another 30 plus years for expansion. The best part about working in the National Cemetery Administration for me, it's an opportunity for me to continue uh, that service of being a part of something larger than myself. For Fort Logan Assistant Director Ed Lyons, this is personal. He lost his hand in combat in Afghanistan. During an ambush, myself and my team leader were struck by an improvised explosive device. It's a way for me to kind of heal from my own losses as well through helping families. They average about 19 burials a day here, including eligible dependents. So because of that demand, they're also adding space throughout the Rocky Mountain region. One is uh, just outside of Billings, Montana. We just opened a new national cemetery up as a part of that rural initiative up in Cheyenne, Wyoming. The same is true at public cemeteries. Well, we have about 30 acres back here that's undeveloped. Including Denver's iconic, incredibly scenic, Fairmount Cemetery. That's the largest arboretum in Denver. Kendra Briggs, president and CEO, says the back 30 buys them lots of time 
for more burials. We have enough room for another 120 years or so. The vision here is to keep it a Colorado landscape. It'll give some more green burial options when that becomes more popular. Which brings us back. We wanted to make sure they had an option that would be in alignment with their values. To this ashes to ashes, dust to dust tale of humans made of earth, wanting to return to the earth. We all are gonna die someday and we have to do something with that body. Recompose is just over $5,000. Beatrice water cremation will cost you about 2,200. Our two goals are to help people live on through nature after they die and also to reduce the environmental impact of the funeral industry. Saving the planet one body at a time. It's really beautiful and powerful work. A lot of people, when they learn about it, are really intrigued and would say that they would consider it. For Denver 7. That's why we do what we do. I'm Russell Haythorn. Yeah, that's a lot to think about. So it's your turn now to weigh in. Email us 360 at thedenverchannel.com.